Hi, I'm going to show you how you can use Google Tag Manager as an SEO tool. Google Tag Manager is predominantly used as an analytics and tracking tool to find tags which measure engagement and track events on your web pages or apps, and then pipe them into GA4. Google Tag Manager works by creating a layer between your website and reporting tools using third party pixels to allow you to track specific user engagement with certain sections, features, and interactions on your website. However, Tag Manager can also be used to make direct edits to the code within the DOM of your website. This makes Google Tag Manager a viable SEO tool for certain tasks. As part one of our course, we're going to be showing you how you can add breadcrumb schema markup to your website using Google Tag Manager to accelerate deployment across many hundreds or thousands of pages on your website, depending on your requirements. So here's our Google Tag Manager account. It's for my website, searchnatural.co.uk. A uh, bit of a shameless plug there. Now we're going to be adding a schema markup for breadcrumb elements on Search Natural. So you can see this is our breadcrumb element on the technical SEO page we've broken back to bespoke, SEMA, bespoke SEO services and then our Search Natural homepage. So we want to roll out schema across this page. So first thing you're going to do is right click and inspect on the breadcrumb element. Your code will be different to mine, but we're going to extract the selector for this code so for this for this feature so we're going to say copy and then selector we can then paste that somewhere where we'll remember it so i'm going to open sublime text and just paste that code in there now we're going to head to google back over to google tag manager and the first thing we're going to do is set up a variable so go to the left hand menu and select variables uh, you can scroll down and press new variable here, um, but we are using an existing variable and it's the breadcrumb category variable. So if you edit, when you select a new variable, you get the option to choose what kind of variable you want to create. For us, we've chosen DOM element. Selection method, we're going to choose CSS selector, and then you're going to paste the code that we just copied from the website, from your sublime text, into the element selector. Attribute name, we called it href. Um, and once that's completed, just hit save and close. So save and the, the variable will close. The next thing we're going to do is add a tag. So the variable defines the specifics of the DOM element that you want to use. And then the tag is kind of how you make something happen to that variable or using that variable. So we're going to go to tags on the left hand menu. We've got new to create a new tag. That's what you'll see. And then you can select uh, custom HTML. But we've got already ours, we've already got ours set up, so we're just gonna show you that one quickly. So we're going to select custom HTML from the type, call it something specific. So I always recommend calling both tags and variables something specific to what you're working on, and specifically tag if it's a tag or variable if it's a variable. This is important because once you create loads of these or many different types of these, it's much easier to identify what they do and the specifics of what they are. Um, so in the tag field, we're going to enter the template for breadcrumb schema markup. Um, this is something that I'm not going to go into how to produce now, but I'm going to link to a page on my website where I've got an example of breadcrumb schema markup, which you can copy and paste into your tag manager and use as you wish. So once that's done, we're going to make some edits. Obviously, you're going to need to edit the name to make it specific to your website. Items, like URL. So I just use a base baseline homepage. All of my pages will come back to the homepage eventually. 
So that's level one of the breadcrumb. So that's that's static. That can stay the same. But you're going to want to change those to your website and wherever your breadcrumbs initiate uh, initiate from. So it might be that your breadcrumbs are first appear on a on a uh, top level category page rather than the home page, uh, and in that case you'll want to uh, change the code to, to, to see that. But specifically, you're going to want to change for, so, so you can get dynamic breadcrumbs and so you can apply this across multiple pages, you're going to want to change these elements to use the variable that you created. So that's breadcrumb text for the name, which uses the name of the previous page, and that's breadcrumb cat variable, which uses the URL of the previous page. So that was the variable we just created. So to, to add a variable to your tag, two curly braces, then you'll be presented with a list of variables you can choose from. We've already got text here, so we know that's the text variable. We're gonna use the cat variable here, and then press save. I've got some other variables set up here, so page title, uh, the broken text variable, and again, page title. That's not something I'm gonna go into today, but there's a different way to set those up, which I will go into in a later video, so stay tuned for that. Once you're done creating your tag, just hit save. The final thing, you might be prompted that you need to add a trigger here, and that's the final thing we're gonna go through, so I'll just go and load that up. Um, you can save tags without triggers, so that's fine. So go to triggers on the left hand menu and then create a new trigger. For us, we're using breadcrumb screener trigger, so I'm just going to load that one up. And then for us, we only want to apply. So once again, call it something specific, can't forget that. So breadcrumb schema, schema trigger, this is specifically for breadcrumbs um and then configure your trigger so when you on the choose trigger tr type screen we've just selected page view and then this trigger fires on all page views or some page views so you can fire the trigger on every page but that wouldn't make sense for us because not every page on our website comes back to the same pages or has the same structure so we're going to do some page views we're going to do page url from the conditional selections and it contains what we offer so all of our pages contain what we offer um, so we only want the breadcrumb to apply in those sections of the site and then you can hit save just to make sure that's all saved once that's done close go back to tags go on to breadcrumb schema tag and then press edit on the triggering. You'll be able to choose a trigger from the list of uh, defined triggers. We're just gonna click breadcrumb schema. That'll make sure that this, this tag is fired when these conditions in the trigger that we specified are true. So press save. Now, to verify that this has all worked, there's a super simple way to do this and it's the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. So once you're ready, once everything's saved, just press preview. Enter the URL that you want to load up. I'm just going to use the home page. Press connect. This will open your home page in a new tab. You'll be able to tell that it's been opened via Google Tag Manager because of the uh, GTM debug param that's appended to the URL. So to test a relevant page, we've got to load a page that where we've where we've created the conditions for this tag to be fired. So for us, that's one of our services pages. So let's click on technical SEO, which is the one we originally got the code from. That's now loaded. Let's go back to Tag Manager and the Debug Assistant and press Container Loaded, and you can see that the breadcrumb schema tag has fired. So clicking on that tag. We can see that page title variable is used here, breadcrumb text variable is used here, breadcrumb cat variable is used here, page title variable is used here, and the consistently used name and URL fields are appearing as expected. 
If you click on values here, you can see that we've got bespoke SEO services, which is the title of the section above our technical SEO section. So that's the page we're marking up. This is the parent page, i.e. the previous breadcrumb element. And then this is the first breadcrumb element, the home page. You can see that we've named it technical SEO, so it can appear, it disappears on the technical SEO page and it's a type of breadcrumb list. So that is all firing and working as expected. So we can go ahead and close that. Let's just check another page. It's always worth checking another page just to make sure if you're rolling out across many hundreds or many thousands of pages that it's not just one page that works, but, but all of them. So let's click on link building for SEO. Page is loaded as expected. Click on container loaded. Again, we can see the breadcrumb. Um, tag has fired. We can again see these variables in the names uh, field. And if we switch to values, we can see again bespoke SEO services. The title this time has changed to link building for SEO. The name has changed to a link building for SEO. So we know that it's all working and it's absolutely fine. So once that's done, you can close the tag assistant. Once you close the window, it'll say not, not connected. You can just close out of that. That's fine. All that's left to do is press submit. Give the version name a nice descriptive name. What have you done? What have you changed? What have you added? And give a brief description of any changes you've made. This is always sensible and good practice to do just because you won't always remember if you've made very small changes one after the other let's say you've missed a comma or you're bug fixing it's quite good just to make sure that that's clear that that's what you're doing there so that's how you do it it's pretty simple um, once you get the hang of it but there's there's many layers that you can use this for many many things you can control and many things you can kind of scale very quickly using Tag Manager as a system to enable you to do so. So thanks for watching. I hope that was useful. I will be back soon with more videos like this. And um, yeah, follow me on YouTube. Like, subscribe, is it? Take care.